up in the system dot debug level something or other. And no MA8, man. Do we it, just, do a fail out we can just we can start <laughs> over at level zero. That's probably the way to do it. Now, this is the reboot of the reboot. Just the reboot of the reboot of the reboot. Multiple <laughs> reboots. How many reboots can you have? Infinity. I mean, how many times have you rebooted your laptop? Almost never. I think I think my new work laptop I've rebooted once, but my brain um, has rebooted multiple times uh, from burnt from burnout. So you there you go. I think I've rebooted my laptop like four times, which is why it is at the Mac store because I got it. <laughs> Because you, re- you rebooted it too many times. <laughs> too many no, times. I rebooted it like four times since 2010. That's too yeah, that's too many times for rebooting. Ah, so yeah, too our many. topic is our topic is burnout, and we have the Josh Burke. Holy shit. The Josh Holy Burke. Shite. Oh well. Ah! Ah! Oh yeah, he's like he's like one of my salesforce superheroes. Holy shit, you guys. I'm so excited. Oh, ah, butterflies, uh-huh. butterflies. <laughs> Uh, Salesforce superhero, and you have a hat that she wants really, really hey, badly. I have a hat. She's gonna, but Megan is not gonna get. It. I am gonna get the hat. It's, I'm telling you now, folks. It's one of the few things that it like never leaves the house. It like never leaves the house. Like I have to help Dude, I'm just, dude I'm no, just this broke. is like one of the first run of swag we did for the podcast, and it's like I don't think we're doing it anymore. And it's like I think I got like the third hat out of like from anybody in the whole world. So dang. So gosh, yeah. I hate to tell you this, but I just broke into my own house. So uh, I got house breaking in superpowers. You got skills. Watch you you yourself, could do a B, you could do a B and E. <laughs> do a couple B and E's. You're all good. Hat, <laughs> you can you can break a window like a ninja. I got it. I got it. She can no, use a can. stick with a screw on the end of it like <laughs> a flipping I, ninja. I can lift those dowels on the windows. So like the dowel can't even protect you, yo. I still don't even understand where this where this <laughs> dowel is on the window, but oh <laughs> that's another that's a topic for another podcast. I, think. I, have many oh, windows. No I don't think Wait. I have any dowels. My dowel to window Wait. ratio is very low. Very, very low. No gotta, dowels here. Wait, wait, I gotta show you guys this. So dowels go on the windows here in the city of the SEA mm-hmm. to protect the break-ins. Oh, because you got left right sliding windows. You don't have up down slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, we don't do the up downs. We do the side to sides. Yeah. Sorry, so, I had to demo. Weird. That makes way more sense now, though. It does. Yeah. True. Because we've got like dowels on our doors, like the sliding. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not dowels, but the same premise sliding but glass used, door. Yeah. But you use the dowel to break in. She used so another I- stick to remove a dowel, as far as I know. Yeah. And I put uh, a screw. yeah, so I put a screw onto another dowel, and I slid my little teeny tiny arms in the window, and then I hoisted the other dowel and flipped it off. And, yeah, I flipped it off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. like basically a, a like a crow or a raven. Yeah, <laughs> Get, getting in, getting into different things, building and making simple tools, using them to to go and. Right. Right, yeah. get the shiny stuff. Yeah, get the shiny yeah. stuff. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, then, then I hopped into my kitchen sink and then hopped off the counter. Booyah! Nah. <laughs> Dang, basically a ninja and Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> all in all one. In, all, in all, one. one. all in one. All in one. Yeah, Did Harley you... Quinn, baby. Harley Quinn. <laughs> uh huh. Harley flipping <laughs> Quinn. So, did you get any? Uh, did you get any house breaking in burnout from that? <laughs> the top of my arm is so bruised. <laughs> Probably not going to be the, breaking in any houses for a while. It's not the easiest <laughs> to reach your arm into a two and a half inch space. Oh, I believe it. I don't know if my arm could fit in a two and a half inch space at all. It would probably just be my hand and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. freaking out. Uh, upcoming stuff. Uh, I want to call out, we got Texas Force coming up this month. Texas uh, Force? That new? Uh, no, it's an architect event that is virtual and in the Phoenix for anyone that likes the unbearable heat. Yeah. 
Uh, or you can go to Eversley, which is so much better. For anyone Fine. who loves the unbearable heat. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's me for sure. I love <laughs> it's just unbearable heat. Uh, um, I'd also like to give a shout out to Rachel and uh, Rebecca that just got married in yeah. the unbearable uh, of Phoenix. Woo! Way to go, yeah. girls. Love you both. Congratulations. Happy marriage. And love you both. Um, sorry, I was not able to make it, but congratulations. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ironically, I couldn't go because I was in Phoenix. That's where <laughs> that's where we vacationed for Christmas. So, <laughs> small world after all. Um, I actually thought that it was next to Cactus Forest which is why I wasn't able to make it. I didn't think that you would have two months of Phoenix next to each other. So, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cactus force, dude. What the hell? I mean, like, oh, Y'all have damage. the wildest names for stuff. Let's go to cactus force. I mean, it's cute, but just like, man. I would have never, I would have uh, never put those two things together, but I love it. If you want to check out any other Salesforce upcoming events, fifty-two of them so far are listed on my blog, Megan Rocks SF, um, on the Salesforce twenty-three um, Salesforce events list. So feel free to check that out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Trying to keep it up to date. If you have more events to add, send them on over. Event submission list is listed right there on the Salesforce twenty-three events list. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Good shout outs. I love those. Nice. Uh, coming up, this, this episode, we are talking about burnout. And, you know, it's something everybody Boy, like we. mentions in passing, but I don't think we actually talk about burnout. Uh, Josh, I know you gave a freaking phenomenal keynote on mental health. And I'd love for you to kind of give us a rundown on some of those highlights and how mental health is something that needs to be talked about in technology and highlighted. Yeah. And I'm going to view myself about it. It was, it was kind of a trip. Um, I I told my therapist that I was going to go test my mental resiliency by uh, getting up in front of a couple of hundred people and talking about my mental resiliency Uh, to which she said, I'm not your advisor. If I was your advisor, I'd probably advise you against doing this, but I'm your therapist. And as your therapist, I trust you. And I think you got it. Um, So yeah, I was closing keynote for Force Landia last year. And it was the result of in November of by the way really quick don't miss Force Landia this year um, in July don't miss it <laughs> props um in November from um a year ago I I the way the way I frame it in the talk is that I I, I was in a meeting with uh, my my boss and a great person Christoph Conrads and realizing through the whole meeting that I'm nothing but terrified um, I'm just terrified of everything. And this is just this is the world's most boring, you know, meeting like on the planet kind of thing. And I told him like, I'm not well, like, I just realized at that point, I'm not well. And I realized as and pretty much like, as I'm saying it, that I hadn't been well for a while, that this wasn't a new thing that I wasn't like all suddenly scared because like Christoph is in the room. Like, no, this has been a pretty, pretty constant feeling for a while. And, um, it was affecting my sleep, it was affecting my work, it was affecting my eating, it was affecting a whole bunch of things. And so I just, at that point, I just pushed the button and um, he was like, well, go figure out what you need and we'll, we'll get it done. And so telehealth is an amazing thing. Um, I got a therapist and a prescriptionist like within a week. Um, I almost wish I had recorded my first meeting with my therapist because not not because there's any good content there, but because it's so difficult to describe to somebody who hasn't experienced it what it's like to not really be able to complete sentences. And you know, I'm talking to her and I'm shaking, um, and I'm not making. And I look, I think back to it now. I'm like, I wasn't making any sense. I just wasn't because it's the first time I'm telling another human being like what's going on with me, uh, in the hopes that we can get through it. And so uh, she put me down this path of 
Uh, thankfully, Salesforce was amazingly supportive. Christoph was amazingly supportive. And um, I was able to take time and, and um, I put the podcast, uh, the Salesforce developer podcast on hiatus. Um, and what my therapist told me was like, you have to go and get enough joy. And she meant joy very specifically, like, like make this, make yourself do something that makes you just super happy because the problem is right now, your brain is so addicted to cortisol, you basically can't be happy. Things won't make you happy. And it's one of the first early signs. So a big warning sign is when you start seeing things that you do that used to bring you joy, when that starts to get diminished. Um, and I know that sounds so ephemeral, but it's like, it's actually a huge problem because what problem the, what happens is your body starts to go into fight or flight instinct and doesn't get out of it. And she's like, we have to, we have to kickstart. We were joking about rebooting, you know, before it's like, you have to, you have to like kickstart your brain enough to remind it that it can get good dopamine and actually be happy. Um, and she's like, this is, you know, she's like, my, my preference is if you could do this for three full weeks, um, which I, I couldn't quite do, but I kind of managed to string together enough mini vacations. Um, and I, it took about two months before I felt like maybe an experiment to, to, to return to work was okay. But I use that phrase very specifically. It was an experiment to go back to work because I, I left in my back pocket. Um, Salesforce also has a great benefit in paid medical leave. And I left in my back pocket, like, if it doesn't, if it goes south, I'm just going to push the button on paid medical leave and peace out for six months. And then we'll figure it out from there. Um, it's, it, it, it never occurred to me that the body in the brain is capable of causing itself that much pain and suffering so consistently. You know, going from room to room, being afraid all the time, shaking, um, not being able to remember things, not being able to see, sleep correctly. Like it, it's almost baffling to me that our physiology is capable of putting ourselves into that state and how difficult it is to pull yourself back out of that state. Um, I, I'm very happy. And so somewhere at, after my return to work, I started thinking about it. <laughs> and this is just sort of like, thankfully my job lets me do this, right? Like once my brain starts thinking, you want to do this as a presentation. You want to do this as a talk. Like this is the soundtrack that you would use. Like it just started rolling and rolling and rolling. And Angela reached out and she's like, well, you know, do you want to do a keynote for Force Landy? And I'm like, I'm thinking about doing this talk on mental health. And I told her kind of that. And she's like, we're doing this. <laughs> she was amazing. She was totally amazing. She was like, we're doing this. I'm going to go talk to Larry about it. Larry's going to tell me it's not technical enough. And then I'm going to tell him we're doing it anyway, uh, which I think might have actually been exactly exactly what happened. And so she was she was also amazingly supportive. Uh, I won't lie, Megan, uh, that that speech, first of all, I'm I am really proud of it. Like, it's, I think it's one, one, quite honestly one of the best talks I've ever done. Um, and I've done a lot. Uh, I also probably had about three CBD gummies in me at the time. Uh, to make sure that my nerves weren't going to go completely haywire. So there's the inside scoop <laughs> for your listeners. That's fair. That is you fair. Know, it wasn't, wasn't stone, but boy, the, the system needed nice a little relaxing calm. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It's understandable. So, so, so I got to say, Josh, I, I, I find so much pride and I, I find you such a role model for that. So to open up to the STD crowd. So, so I am in my second round of burnout recovery. And unlike Josh, I did not reach out to my employer for help or to, to take time off. And I just told myself I was fine. And the first time I was in my, my mid twenties and I sucked it up and I had taken two weeks off and I said, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. Dude, I just had two weeks off and I had never taken a day off in my career. I was, dude, yeah. two weeks off after never taking a day off, you're freaking fine, right? What you can, if you take two weeks off and you've never taken a day off, you think you are a okay. And I was not, dude. They literally thought that I'd had an aneurysm or hemorrhage after I passed out at work and I was not fine. And this time, I took three months off of work. I could barely get out of bed after that. I struggled to get up for about six months. 
And I had been working 90 hour weeks. I had barely seen daylight. And it doesn't take that much though to burn out. You don't have to be working 90 hour weeks. You can be working 40 hour weeks. You can be working 60 hour weeks and you can still be burning yourself out. And yeah. it doesn't take killing yourself to do it. It just takes pushing yourself to your limit. And mm-hmm. everybody's limit is different. And when you start hitting that limit, you have to start taking breaks. You have to take a day off. You have to, you have to talk to somebody. You can't keep going. And currently right now, I decided to take a lesser hour job for lesser pay for a more rewarding career. And I have never felt better in my life. But I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where it took me, you know, 28 years of working to figure that out. And (laughs) I'm still in recovery, you know, a year later. And, (laughs) and my doctor is telling me it's going to be two more years before I get back to myself if I want to Mm. work while I'm getting better. And Mm -hmm. no matter how much I want to work, if I want to work, it's going to be at least two more years before I'm back to myself. Yeah. And burnout is freaking real. And super real. the, The more you hit it, the more often you hit it and the more you avoid it, the more real it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it doesn't just affect you and your work. It affects your personal relationships, your family relationships, your dietary habits, your weight, your freaking blood pressure, your heart rate, your everything. It anxiety, is anxiety, panic anxiety. attacks. Oh my God. The panic attacks, the anxiety. Yes. Yes. All of that gets impacted. And it's a real thing. I mean, people have probably noticed that I go up and down in community relationships the past like two years. It's the more the burnout is hitting me, the less I am there. Yeah. And it's it's gonna keep doing that. And so I can find balance. Yeah. And finding that balance is key. And you just can't keep pushing yourself forever. You can't. No. You, it's also you can't do a community event every month and present every month, run something every month, run a community event every month, plus work 90 hour weeks, yep. plus be everything to your family, plus be everything to your friends. You have to find a balance. Yeah. You Go do ahead, because, guess. well, I was going to say it, it's also um, a, a problem of kind of diminishing returns, right? So you work 40 hours a week and you can be productive some percentage of that, right? Let's say it's 80%, right? So you're going through your life and you're, you're super happy with your 40 hour a week, 80% productivity. Great. That's awesome. Now, all of a sudden you got to work. Who are, what 60. tech works 40 hours a week? I'm sorry. Tell I me mean, more. me, but, um, but then you get asked to do some different things, right? And you start doing 60 hour weeks, right? What is your productivity at 60 hour weeks? As sure, sure as heck, not 80%. Now you might be down to 70, 60%, right? Then yeah. you start doing 80 hour weeks and you're down to 50, 40%. So, so in that doubling of time, right? You were doing 40, now you're doing 80. And you were, you were actually productive, right? For 80% of the time. Now all of a sudden you're productive 40% of the time you've doubled your hours and half your productivity and it doesn't add up. You've just stacked more hours on top of, of your doing stuff where your brain is just stuck spinning its gears, spinning its wheels. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, number one, I wanted to kind of touch on, uh, two things that y'all said earlier before we started the call. Right. And one of those things, uh, Megan said was you can't be somebody that rocks if you take time off, you have to be working 24, seven, 24, seven in order to rock. Right. That's absolutely false. And I know, I know she meant it that way. Right. She meant it as, Hey, this is what people think of you. This is what you think of yourself. Right. 
or this is what you think other people want from you. And while they might want that from you, um, that's not what you're giving, right? You can't, you can't possibly work 24 seven. Um, you will physically give up in your body legitimately. And this kind of goes into what, what you had said earlier, Josh, your brain doesn't care what your boss thinks, right? So your boss wants you to work 80 hours a week. Your brain doesn't care your brain. If you push it to the max, think about working out, right? If you lift up, if you're, if you're max for, for like a bench press or a squat or something is a hundred pounds and you do that and you do that for 20 minutes straight. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to do it for another 20 minutes and you do it for another 20 minutes and you, and everything just starts feeling not great. And then you're like, you know what? I can do it. I'm going to do it for another 20 minutes. Your body is eventually just going to give in. Your body's going to say, look, man, it's cool that you want to keep going, but we're not, you can't, you right. cannot. And you, you, right. you pass this physical limit with your brain and with your body where everything just starts to shut off. Um, and, and it'll shut off with or without your consent. It, it does not care it does uh, how not badly care. you want to work. It doesn't <laughs> care that your bills are due. It doesn't care that your boss is going to yell at you. It doesn't care if you're going to get fired. Your body is just like, no mas, I'm sorry, but we're done here for the day. Yeah. And, and that's an important thing to touch on because when you get to that point, you are in for a world of hurt because you're not going to be able, and this is, and I'm I'm kind of talking to the, to the average person here. This isn't going to happen to every single person. It's going to be, you know, your mileage may vary, but when you get to that point, you're going to be in serious trouble because most likely you're not going to be able to do anything. And Joshua, this, this goes back to what you were saying. You might not even be able to form full sentences. You might not be able to compile full entire thoughts and get them from brain to mouth without yeah. stumbling over them, without thinking through it for, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. It, it's <clears throat> your body has legitimately rebooted and is going, okay, what do we need to do? We're in fight or flight mode. So like you, and, and it's, it's just reactionary from that point and it's not good. Yeah. So yeah. The, the biggest thing for me is you're not you when you no. hit that point. Yeah. Not at all. And, and when it comes to me for work, there is a standard and there is a persona that I like mm-hmm. being. It is the bubbly Megan. It is the happy Megan. It is the energetic Megan. And that is what I bring to the table is the energy, the excitement, the flavor. And when I'm not that, I'm not me. And yeah. why the F would you want me when I'm not me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love being me and I love my energy and I I love my excitement. And there is, I get myself excited when I am me. Like there's just something about my excitement about platforms, integrations and systems. It's just (laughs) to be excited about it. And I love it. It just makes me 10 times more excited, which gets the team more excited. Yep. And, And I am tired, Megan. Dude, I am going to see you next Tuesday. I do not want to <laughs> see you. I don't want to be there. Oh, yeah. I'm a capital C, but bye. Do not cross that girl. Like, we want to get her off the yeah. calls, make her the girl behind the curtain. Okay? Yeah. 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 And when they're like, we're going to make you the girl behind the curtain, that's when I know she's hitting, she's hitting her, she's hitting her peak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to take but, time off right you got to take time off to recover from that off. kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and so yeah. that's what i need to learn instead i go put yourself harder you can get back to bubbly Mm-mm. no the, no you not, can't the, right you can't just power through it you just can't and it, it goes back to that example of like you know if you sprained your ankle in a marathon your response wouldn't be i'm just going to get back in the marathon your response to be get out of the marathon puts bias on it and and move forward and this there's one of the big things in the talk is mental health is physical health and vice versa um the human body is designed to be in a fight or flight mode for only 15 minutes so every minute you spend anxious 
tired, you know, when, when you're getting pushed in that corner, and every minute past that is physical damage to your body. And one of the things, <laughs> my therapist is like, you know, you're one of the few people who actually took my advice right away. Like you actually took time off. You actually left. You actually went on vacation. You had a bunch of, did a bunch of stuff with your wife. She's like nine times out of 10, my patients come to me because they've just been hospitalized. Like they get put into the hospital because that's where their body is gotten to. So that, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. I, I ended up with two weeks in the hospital and I was like, two weeks in the hospital is good. I can keep going now. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no, big, big N-O to that, Megan, big N-O, um, because if so, so recovery from burnout, right? When you're, when you're thinking about just working through it, number one, don't let anyone tell you that you can just work through it. You can't just like Josh said, mm -hmm. it's like running a marathon, spraying your ankle and then continuing the marathon thinking that just running is going to make your ankle better. It is not, it is absolutely not. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, don't be ashamed to tell somebody about it because Thank it's a very you. real thing. It is a very big deal. And if you think about it from the perspective of, oh, I can't let my teammates down. And that's why you don't want to stop because you don't want to let people oh. down. Guess what? You're, You're going to let them people down. down a lot worse in the end if you continue down that path. If you at least plan a vacation, and go through it that way and have something planned out, right? And say, oh, hey, you know, here's here's what's going on. I'm going to take some time off. I'm having, you know, some mental health issues. And you don't even have to disclose that, right? Yeah. That's that's sensitive information. You don't have to disclose that. You can just say, look, I'm going to take two weeks off for, for this period of time, do my thing. And then, you know, um, another uh, next month after those two weeks, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work a month and then I'm going to go back and take another two weeks. Great. You don't have to tell anybody what it's for if you don't want to. Yeah. There is a bit of power um, and a bit of, of uh, self-empowerment, I guess, in telling people because what will happen, uh, especially, and I want to put this, uh, the emphasis on if you are a manager or if you have people of your own uh, that you're responsible for, there is power to speaking those words out loud. Because yes. other folks will follow in your footsteps and say, oh, my manager took time off for mental health. That means I too can take time off for mental health and it's okay. And, and please, please, please give your team off yeah. time. They ask for it. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why I am talking about it this time and not keeping it to myself. I talked about it at Dreamforce. I talked about it at Forcelandia. And I mean, I was an idiot for thinking I could power through after two weeks in the hospital last time. Mm -mm. I, I did not. I did not. And then and on top of that, you went back to the bad habit, right? I did. Yeah. I went back to yeah. 90 hour weeks. I went back to 72 <laughs> hour days and it was the stupidest thing I ever did. And I was a poor example for my team. It really was. Uh, working US and India, just me and my team think they had to do what I was doing and mm -hmm. it was not okay. And, and I would tell them not to, but they were seeing me doing it. Yeah. It they're not going to listen. For example. <laughs> yeah. I, I've tried the do as I say, not as I do approach to management and it doesn't really work very well. To be it, honest. it does not. Yeah. It does not. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the reasons why this time I am taking it slow. I am cutting back tickets and cutting back stories and I I am making a more realistic example for my team and I am hoping that doing something that is half of what I was doing before for my team is more realistic yeah yeah yeah, yeah I mean it's it's hard because I think in tech especially we have um, unrealistic you know, expectations what, right. And it's like, we're, we're, we are supposed to be the trusted advisors. We're supposed to be the people who can solve problems. We're very trustworthy. We're very reliable, et cetera, et cetera. And I think there's this kind of mix up of, well, I can't tell my boss I have high anxiety because then he's not going to trust me that he might not let me do my job. Like he might, he might and, fire me. Eventually. And I'll, I'm going to say this, Josh, I'm going to say this as an MVP, I feel an unrealistic expectation that I'm supposed to do more. Yeah. And it's like, the thing is, though, so when, it, when I 
when I had to put the podcast on a hiatus, I had to tell like three guests, like, Hey, we're not doing this interview. Like I, and, but, and I made the decision, like, I'm just going to tell them, like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to use any euphemism. I'm like, I'm in the middle of a nervous breakdown. I'm getting recovery. I need to get the F out. I just can't do this. And one of the reasons why I ended up doing the force landia talk was because every person I talked to either had a similar experience was was afraid they're about to experience the same or had a loved one who experienced the same. So, so if you're, you're hearing this, like, like the who to tell, who not to tell, like I would start with your circle of trust, especially if they're people you work with, because I'll almost guarantee you, you're going to find other people who share this commonality. And when you tell them your story, they'll tell you your story and both of you will actually feel better for it. And there's, there's this kind of nice, cyclical motion of sharing with the fact that this is something that happens and it happens to a great many of us, especially in the tech industry. We just don't talk about it to the same proportion. Yeah. And we don't talk about it because the the problem is that it's been seen as this like really, I don't know. I don't even know how, how to, how to phrase it, but like, it, it's just, it's just kind of like a no fly zone. Right. People, right. people who are, uh, you know, you know, in the in the generations uh, that came before us, were always in that sort of, and and we talked about this with Megan too, like her dad, right? Um, working working twenty four seven, right? And you see this, and you want to emulate it because you think that's that's what success looks like. And when you when you exactly. kind of think about when you think about life, right? Actual life, human life. What is success? It's being happy, you know, potentially having a family might be one of your definitions of success. For some, um, for, for some. some, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. For for some, that might be, you know, different things. Having hobbies is is another definition of success for some. Um, <laughs> like that, you're like not it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not it. Those not goes. Not those goes. Not it. <laughs> Hash, but yeah that's hashtag what like, cats not kids yep <laughs> exactly that's what i'm saying so like having having pets is another you know that's that's a fun that's a fun part of life for some people some people are big into pets you know some people are big into traveling those these are things that fill Travel. fill your life right and that's that's what having a good life is about that's that's what a six there you go look at that kitty look at that sweet little fluff butt <laughs> And so, th- so you have to figure out what your actual definition of success is. If it's just money, yeah, run your, run your body into the yeah. ground if you want to for, for every single right. dollar that you can. But I, I doubt that that's anyone's actual definition of success. It's, it's much okay. more complex okay. than that. All right. So- one, one of my therapist's interesting quotes was she was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I have had sessions with people who are like stupid wealthy. And mm-hmm. she's like, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. Like they're they're some of the most miserable people I've ever met. Dude, I was I was chasing that dollar. Yeah. For yeah. Years, years. It, it, but I mean, my dad was working these seventy-two hour shifts. It's a doctor, and I mean, one of his partners had a stroke, and so he was working his partner shifts on top of his shifts. Well, then he just went in for emergency surgery last weekend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't work. And then work somebody else's shifts on top of your shifts as doctor in the freaking ICU and be totally fine. And then, of course, then you make your six children freaking worry about you <laughs> yep. and have them go all paranoid. And then now we're going to worry and go, oh, dad, we're so worried about you. Uh, and then for me, for the first time in my life, I finally chill when I stopped chasing that dollar. Yeah. And... I mean, I took like a two hundred thirty thousand dollar pay cut and worked in women's <laughs> rights, and yeah. I'm like, man, I'm living in Seattle. I'm barely getting by. God damn, I'm happy, and yeah. I'm making a difference, and I'm doing something I truly believe in. And I, and I never believed when people said, if you work in something you believe in, you'll be happy. No. It's and, true my god i never believed it and now i'm doing it and i'm like oh my god i'm finally freaking happy and it's it's mind-blowing it's a mind-blowing man mm-hmm. and 
the stress is gone, the anxiety is gone, the 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 over hours are gone because I finally left consulting. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's like you can finally breathe and take a moment for yourself. And it's just like, and then you're finally doing something that you believe in, and you're like, I'm making a difference. I'm doing something I believe in. I have a minute for me. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Did it's you, wild. How did nobody ever tell me this in my 20s, man? <laughs> it's like my 30s to figure this out. Whoa. Right. I would I would love to imagine that you would have listened, but I know me in my 20s, <laughs> I would not have listened. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody did tell me in passing, like, hey man, trust me, this is the way to be happy. And I was like, nah, F you, man. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go do something cool. And I like skated off on my skateboard or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like <laughs> <laughs> you know like I was off on my roller skates and i was like dude i got this i'm making bank that's what i'm saying yeah. it, t- it takes it takes the the experience of, right? of living through it to kind of get you to the point where you're like oh okay yeah. right yeah, right and, that, and that's the thing like in my 20s during the dot-com days it's like a 70-hour week was pretty normal like nobody yeah. really we didn't talk about it we didn't think about it it was just like you this is you're just going to bleed to the client because that's what you do you when you're a consultant and yeah. um to finally I, I, leave that consulting was right whoa whoa yeah and it's like you do wonder like if you did if you could go back in time and be like, dude, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> hey, I don't know. If Even I if would. it's in the next five to ten years, but yeah, like, would I, I? It's a good question. I don't know if I would have listened at the time. I was having a I, good time I, back then. I just didn't I realize how so, bad it was. I was so stubborn, and I don't think I would have realized <laughs> the value if I would have wouldn't have gone through the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And and the other side too. I think Josh just uh, accidentally brought up a good point, right? Just because it's not painful doesn't mean it's not contributing to burnout. You can you can right. literally have fun every single day and be working 80 hour weeks, 90 hour weeks and, and have fun doing it the entire time. Two, three, six, nine months, whatever, whatever time it is, all of a sudden it just starts catching up to you and you're like, whoa, yeah. why am I so lethargic? Why do I not yeah. want to get out of bed? Why do I hate everything? You know, yeah, we're going through this phase, <laughs> like back um, post like World War II, there was this big debate about like PTSD and shell shock and like, is it real or is it just a, a lack of character and all of this? And, and now we have the science. We know it's real. We know it actually causes actual changes in the brain and the brain is actually experiencing things in a different way than it did before the, the trauma. Um, and some of that stuff is totally fascinating. Like, like how it works against the gland that controls time. So like when somebody's experiencing uh, their trauma, they're actually experiencing it at the time of the trauma, like some just really yeah. scary facts, but fascinating science, at least we're, I think we're going through this phase where we're realizing the truth about like micro trauma. And trauma does, does not have to be, um, so there's a, there's a book that really got me like we're rolling down this path. The body keeps the score. Um, and it's almost infamous in the mental health community because it, it has some really, really graphic stuff in it. And I think some people are like, well, I wasn't that abused as a child. So is my, you know, where does my trauma come from? Well, your trauma can come from anything. The brain doesn't care. Anything that can traumatize the brain, it could be long hours, it could be family illness, it could be uh, the death of a pet, it could be anything. And as long as that trauma goes unchecked over time, you're you're going to get to burnout. You're going to get to that nervous breakdown phase. It's not a matter of when it's, or not a matter of if it's a matter of when. Yeah. It's like, it's like thinking about loud noises where like you can really damage your eardrums. Right. And you're like, well, I didn't go to that many concerts. Okay, well, what were you around? Oh, I was just, you know, I was an airplane mechanic. I was a jet mechanic. <laughs> okay, just because you didn't go to the, like, it, <laughs> people right. associate so tightly these right. certain, right. these certain, like, breakages with certain types of things. It's like, I didn't go to a lot of concerts. Yeah, dude, but you're like, you're standing right next to a, a jet right. engine just right right here what's what year is it that's messed up oh it's that one interesting that that's one? weird <laughs> coincidental <laughs> so coincidental it, it's probably because all the rock music ways, is over there 
I won't I won't say it's worse because everybody's trauma is their own. But what yeah. I will say is that it tur- it does that's how it creeps up on you. Because it does compound it over time and kind of like, you know, you get used to the sound of the plane. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean the sound of the plane isn't infecting your your eardrum. It's just that your brain has adjusted because that's your current environment. Yep. And if your current environment is stress, your brain will lie to you and say this is okay, it's just you. You don't, you know, just just push on. Just like Megan was saying, like just push on, keep on, you'll keep be fine. On. But but your brain is just this little chemical vial of fat, and it will lie to you. It's not a perfect device, and um, sometimes you have to take a step back and not listen to the brain, listen to your body, listen to what's going on with your life. And if you are hitting that phase of actual of, of proper burnout, then I like I am partially I'm here because I want to be a cautionary tale. I want people to hear what happens before you get to the point where I got to and hopefully do steps, have things in your life, which bring you that joy so that you don't get to that point where you were a quivering mess in front of your therapist. Yeah. We need a big flashing light uh, or a big flashing sign in the middle of the screen right now that just says, take time off, take time for yourself. <laughs> take like, time burr, off. Burr, burr. Go talk to people. Socialization is one of the best forms of therapy. Um, touch grass as the kids say on the internet touch these days. Grass, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, take time for yourself in those happy moments because you gotta, you gotta kind of drench yourself in those happy moments to remind your brain that that's where it's supposed to be going. Yeah. Cause that's what, that's what we're working for, right? We're working for the happy right. moments. Megan, you're on mute. Right. I feel like you're talking very passionately on mute. Oh, there we go. There you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you looked, you looked like you were talking extremely passionately. I was like, wait, Megan, wait, what did she say? Wait, 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 wait. And when we say socialization, we don't just mean go to Salesforce events. We mean get out there, yeah. be social, get time for you. Going to a Salesforce event every month is not enough. It's no. really not. And like, get- and like you're saying as an MVP, it's actually, it, it, you have a hybrid of it being both fun, but also part of kind of part of your job. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's work. Dude, it's work. It, it's acting yeah. work. And get the, sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to drop it because we are not just for children. Get the fuck out there, dude. Do Mm -hmm. something. (laughs) Do something for you. Don't just do something for your career. Do something. I love how how Wisconsin you just sounded. Do something for you. (laughs) It was like, it was there. Totally. It was was there. Do something for you, Bobby. (laughs) Oh, yeah, there he (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you're right you have to you, you, you're both right you have to get out you have to do stuff that that makes you feel happy makes you feel alive and i know that's super ambiguous but it can be really? anything you can you can just go chill right. on the beach you know started roller skating that was go my roller thing skate. yeah started. that's cool as heck and i hate jared taylor for getting me into the roller skating thank you jared nice <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's different for everybody well that's one, one one of the things my therapist said was like think about what you want to have in your life to relax you to make you happy and you know once you hear it you'll know it kind of thing but she's like some people want to go on a beach and read a book and be around nobody at all some mm-hmm. people want to go to a rock concert like it's it's whatever makes you happy that's the direction you kind of have to go in and maybe it's roller skating like you just you just kind of never know oh um, and i gotta but it's different for everybody going to a dropkick murphy's or a social distortion concert is one of my favorite things to do ever good bands yes. good bands yeah. yep and that's the that's that's perfectly fine that's that's one that's i think that a lot of people could kind of fall into it's like oh i want to go see my favorite artist in concert right mm-hmm. that's great save up some some bucks and go to go to a taylor swift show or go to a drop king oh. murphy's show or wh- like whoever you love whatever you're passionate about it's make like time 20 for it. bucks huh? to see drop king murphy's it's like 40 bucks to go to see machine gun kelly come on man it's like 1400 bucks to go see taylor swift so yeah Oh, he's bad man. That's a that's a concert I won't go see. <laughs> yeah, I have I have a, a Swifty for a wife, and she is so in love with Taylor Swift. She's like, I have to go to every stinking concert. So she just and and that's her happiness though. So she yeah. she gets out there and she goes to her her Taylor Swift concerts and she loves the heck out of them. And I'm happy for her to go. 
<laughs> so Most expensive, expensive concert I have ever seen was Machine Gun Kelly. $40 <laughs> is the most expensive concert you've ever been to? Machine Gun Kelly wow. is the most expensive concert I've ever seen. How much was it? I thought you said it was $40. 48 I think. Wow. Huh. Yeah. That's a pretty cheap uh, concert. Yeah. By my standards, at least. I think I don't think that gets you into a Bulls game here. I was going to say, uh, when I when I got Primus tickets uh, for Atlanta, they were, I want to say they were like 60 rock. bucks. I got a punk shows. <laughs> if a show's not under 30 bucks, I'm not going. Dang, dude. <laughs> nice. And I live in Seattle. If yeah. it's not at the show box, I'm not going. The show box? I don't even know what Machine Gun Kelly? Was it the WAMU? Now, first of all, that stadium is flat. The show box, of all, Seattle. Yeah, they look up a show box. Uh, everybody here on the show, look up show box right now. They want to shut it down. Please put in to make it a historic place. Because I mean, oh, dude, I'm bruising on my lower arm now from the window. <laughs> Some of them come slowly. Yep. <laughs> oh, dude, I just got it. See, see, you're you're an example of micro trauma right there. You don't know until time passes how it's affecting your body. <laughs> micro trauma. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a cute ball. little place. I like this place. Sorry for the tangent, but I I enjoy this. Dude. Uh, yeah, dude, it's amazing. Box. You want a screen share? Show the place. No, I mean it's it's just everyone can google it they'll, they'll get better resolution pictures it's just <laughs> but it's very cute it's just a cute Dude, little it's super cute spot. it's a micro stadium uh it's like a going micro. to the rave in milwaukee a lot of micros here <laughs> right in this episode this is the micro and now i want a micro brew yeah it's, uh, there we go it's like basketball stage size all right oh, basketball okay. stage what is that basketball uh, court basketball court, basketball court. yeah I know all these words. I know sports. <laughs> I know. I know sports. <laughs> you ever seen sports before? Oh, this is yeah, yeah. I can. I can see it. I can see that. It's kind of like. Um, I saw a yellow card there. I saw uh, young blood there. Um, social distortion like five times. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of kind of intimate setting it's kind of a smaller venue like, they have like five bars wait they have five i only saw two but holy moly yeah it's fabulous huh yeah what yeah i mean there's like, there's a lot of venues in new york that are also yeah, like this like two bathrooms, two yeah. bathrooms? Yeah. that that is typically uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> issue of, of those types of places yeah more bars than bathrooms this, this is turning into a nathan show where we're getting sidetracked <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah do so that's 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 the main thing right is that figure out what it is that's going to make you smile it's gonna, um mm-hmm. it's going to bring you joy and it can be anything. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be going out. It doesn't have to be going to a show. It doesn't have to be. You can go outside in your backyard. Like some people just yeah. like going outside in their backyard and chilling out. Some people hey, like just lounging on their couch with their Netflix. significant other. You know, watching Netflix. Yeah. Watching hey, Netflix. Watch it. You need a significant other. You can just sit and watch Netflix. You could do that too. Yeah. Some people just like to read next to other people. You know, go to go to a little bookstore. You can just sit there and buy squishmallows on Amazon if it makes you happy. Absolutely, you can. You can go to Target and you could just go I, squeeze all the squishmallows if you I want to. Yeah, in my squishmallow collection. Oh man, yeah. You don't even want to see my kids' squishmallow collection. I got three oh. kids and three thousand squishmallows. So I have nine of the Hello Kitties. I believe it. Yeah, I know you do. I, fully I know you do. It. You know me so well. <laughs> But yeah, figure out that's that's an important thing. Um, how how do y'all figure out what it is that brings you joy? I guess that's that's a that's a good question for the two of you while while you're here. How and you, what? Brings- yeah, yeah. I mean, no. I, I just went to old classics. Um, I'm a big video gamer, so gaming usually at least turns the brain into you know a nice did little you, flow state. Did you Zelda it? 
Did I what? Oh yeah. Well, I just I just spent like 250 hours in Breath of the Wild over the last like three, oh, months, nice. three, or three months or so. Literally just did nothing but binge that game. Um, so, uh, so I have a friend that had some surgery and apparently he played like all of the Zelda. Nice. Oh, like all the oh wow. Yeah. It blew yeah. my mind. I was like, fuck you, dude. I didn't even know if he played Zelda. <laughs> all um, of the Zelda. That's a lot of Zelda. That's a lot really? of Zelda. It's a lot of length. If you're going across platforms. That's a lot of length. Yeah. 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 That's like, yeah. I don't even. I just did. I did this whole explanation of I don't know how to play 3D games. Oh yeah, no, that's a thing. Wait, Actually, what? there's there's a there's a whole subsection of people who almost can't play 3D games because it just either distracts them or, or makes them nauseous. So I can't do depth perception because I bifocals. <laughs> And it makes mm. me really sick to play them. Mm-hmm. And so my current glasses are my first non-bifocals, so I can't do it. Because no. yeah. and yeah. I have that. It's the first time I have to lift my glasses to read, and I feel like an old person. And so <laughs> in front of people. And so I feel like such an ass, but I just refuse to read things, and I ask other people to read them. And so... um. No, for me, I, I refuse to play games unless yeah. anybody's yeah. got an NES or a Sega Genesis. Um, of course, I have both, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yeah, so those are what I bought when I turned 18 because my parents said video games will make you violent. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm a real. Uh, yeah. yeah. Least violent person you know. I, I tell people I'm going to punch them in the face and then I just walk away. Um, I'm really good at threats. Really good at threats, and then I just walk away. Um, and I, you see that, or I'll dance them out. And I try to like ease dance you down, like dance out, like they did in the 80s. So I believe, according to music videos, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, you know, for me, I I became a reader and a camper. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, camping yeah disappear for three to ten days and then come back yeah yeah so if i disappear for three to ten days online i left my phone at home you're I went out to the <laughs> you're out you're out in the mountains somewhere and starting a fire with no technology i had a oh. lift drop me off and i told it when to pick me up Wow. And I have a scheduled pickup. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know yeah. you could do that. Yeah, you schedule a pickup, yeah. you schedule a drop off, you're good to go. Nice. Yeah, no, nature can be a big one. Um, and the the current title of the talk is The Pool at Nowhere because it's like that's where I ended up just sort of floating and trying to like control my breathing and all of those kind of stuff. And it's like <laughs> the vacation we just did, which was a proper vacation, like it was a real vacation. Like it wasn't therapy there was no work involved like it was just me my wife a jacuzzi in a pool and that was the center we're just hanging out in phoenix just chilling out in the water for the most part and it's like that just puts my puts my brain back to zen mode wait you had a jacuzzi had a jacuzzi in a pool and a pool so you could get into the hot jacuzzi and then hop into the slightly warm slash cool pool Uh and you could kind of go vice versa I'm sorry, Senor Jasper. That is not nature. <laughs> I mean, it's nature in a jacuzzi. It has an element of nature around it. <laughs> I, I literally have them draw me at a backpack drop off and pick me up at a different spot. <laughs> so I did Boy Scouts and uh, I remember <laughs> how to start a fire with no technology and I don't have any need, don't, desire to ever do it again <laughs> i have them pick me up like 30 miles away and i've got to hike it yeah wow yeah yeah that, that's where i am when you guys don't see me for 10 days <laughs> that's what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> when you're your not breaking name? into your own house <laughs> breaking in through the window and jumping in the kitchen sink that's where I am. <laughs> that's 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 only like six hours of my day. 
You're ridiculous. Ridiculous. You guys are my favorite. Tash, you need to be on our podcast like all the time. <laughs> I'd be mean, happy to come back at some point. All the time, probably be hard. It's uh, hard enough to be on my podcast all the time. Um. <laughs> yeah. I love to be on yours. This is fucking fantabulous. <laughs> yeah. The great thing is, you edit, we don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> which i mean that is that's a that's not bad advice actually like like i'm like if anybody wants to do a weekly podcast in like the style that i'm doing it please talk to me first because uh, there's hours in the week that you need to know that you're gonna have to like schedule to get that done so, yeah. <laughs> a lot of so hours. maybe just don't so we're gonna call this cuts thank you everybody for being here this is burnout let's hop on over to the g chat fabulous see you All on right. the same one before. Bye. Cheers, y'all.